Hello. We are going to paint the amber bottles here in the still life. We're going to start out with putting water all over the areas that we want to do a soft wet into wet blend, which means everything with the exception of the bottles and the windows. Okay, those three windows up on the upper left hand side. Um, I'm starting off with ultramarine blue and some cobalt blue. Here I'm adding a little bit of burnt umber to get this grayish color, which is probably going to get a little greener later on. We're going to add some green, some sap green to that. But right now I'm trying to just mass everything in. And um, I'm adding a little bit of color on the bottom, a little bit of um, color on the, the window sill itself and around the window because the window looks like it's um, it's a little darker because it's silhouetted against the the, uh, the light so I may go over that again later on which I think I do and um, just painting around some of the shapes some of the um, the dry flower arrangement inside the basket that is a basket right there um, and I'm just putting in some colors that I see. I'm seeing a little purple. And I'm actually probably not seeing the purple, but I'm adding it because it complements the um, the brown, or the I should say the amber bottles. Um, so adding that, adding the purple to the background. You'll see that everything is going to blend really soft um, as we go. There's a lot of puddling up top around the windows, which I take away right now. And yeah, so I'm just lifting up some of that color in there. Um, I don't want it to spill or make a mark if I tilt the watercolor paper. So now we're getting like a good feeling of the background. I'm probably deciding what to do. Now here, there's a little bit of that amber color, which is like, okay, to get that color was uh, basically burnt sienna. Um, I'm going to say I used cadmium red and cadmium um, yellow, but you can use cadmium orange or any kind of orange to get that effect. Um, but that is just the light coming through the... Um, the, the sort of like a prism effect so the light's kind of emitting through where the shadow it's actually the shadow but it's since it's transparent it's causing that shadow to be um basically amber color so uh now more green we're dropping in greens as we go um in the dry flower arrangement um there's actually little pine cones right there i think there's three i don't i think i only paint two um what this structure or that this big shape, I should say, uh, it kind of helps to lead your eye into the painting. Here I'm just putting in some dark embellishments that are just going to represent some of the shadow shapes. Um, that's sap green, there's yellow ochre, there's um, uh, a little bit of um, cadmium yellow in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the dried uh, leaves or yeah, the lead, the leaves, and that little dry uh, flower arrangement on the lower left-hand corner. Now, I did put a little uh, green in there um, near the window, like I said I was, because it kind of has that feeling. Um, it's kind of like a greenish blue. Um, I'm just using sap green. You could probably use whatever green you'd like, but as long as it's not too bright, it's okay. Um, Let's see. And I did actually uh, tone it down with some burnt umber. So now I'm working on the bottle. So I decided to go around and really just putting some bright color in as the base. So when I start to paint over this yellow color, um, all the rest of the, the umbers, um, the, the burnt sienna, they're all just going to kind of bleed into these colors too. So it's sort of like the, the first wash. I'm trying to get everything to um, blend together where, the, where there is blending on the bottles, um, but keeping it loose. So I, don't, I didn't want this to be a really hard edged um, painting. I wanted it to have like a soft edge. 
I want I didn't want it to be um, too overwhelming uh, as far as like all the detail and the reflections I wanted more of an impression here so um, and there are some beautiful watercolor paintings of glass bottles out there uh, which look beautiful very detailed very photographic um, this isn't that this is more of a just kind of ephemeral feeling type painting more on the impressionistic side so um, going forward we have a little bit more um, burnt umber burnt sienna in there and I'm painting those flowers as though I'm going right into the bottle, which they are overlapping. So there's going to be a big, you'll see that I'm going to be painting around those, those flower shapes. Um, I think they're, uh, I'm not sure, but I think it's like a dry hydrangea flower. Um, I could be wrong. I'm not sure what it is, but they had these little tiny petals, um, which I'm going to delineate later on with um a little bit more uh you'll see we're going to go a little opaque in some of these areas all right more green um more sap green has probably a little yellow ochre in it um to get it a little darker i always add burnt umber to my greens just to keep them uh, in this case there's a little bit of ultramarine blue too in that in that green um, and I'm going to go over this again what I'm doing is I'm suggesting some of the um, parts of the like the um, the weaving in the basket just by indicating some of the dark shapes and it's exactly what I'm doing with the pine cones too I'm just painting the shadow shapes and I'm letting the, the the, well, now would be the positive sh shading, uh, be the actual part of like the petals, if you want to call them petals on the pine cone. Um, and that's what, that's what that is. So keeping it really simple by not laboring it just to try to get a feel for that, um, that those shapes. And I do go back there and add a little bit of, um, are um, like, kind of like a brownish color because if you look at the picture, the inset on the upper right hand corner, um, you can see that there's a little brown. And um, there it goes. So there's more dark as we go forward. And um, yeah. So just continue to add some of that dark. Now you're probably wondering what dark that was, and that's basically burnt umber and ultramarine blue. It's probably the darkest. I don't usually use black in a painting. Um, very rarely do I ever. Maybe paints gray at times, but um, I usually make my own dark black color. Uh, again, with ultramarine blue and burnt umber. All right. So, um, okay. So we can see, you know, some of the shapes in there. Um, and I'm keeping everything very impressionistic. I do not want to go um, too uh, detailed with anything at this point. Even the flowers are kind of suggested. The bottles are all, everything is bleeding together, which is fine for a watercolor like this. You know, you want to try to encourage blending um, because they're so, these washes are so light, they're just going to add to the atmosphere. Of the picture later on. Um, okay, so here's the brown and the uh, the pine cone um, leaves, um, and going back and adding another layer because I felt that that needed to be a little darker. Now that darkness in the foreground there on the lower left hand side is actually helping the composition bring um, your eye into like into the composition without going off the composition right if that wasn't there uh, well first of all it would be unbalanced but um i thought this this was a nice picture um let's see so more um and more little details here and there um i'm trying to create more form more value and uh just doing it with like these little just these little dots 
They're really not necessarily anything specific. Some of them do look a little like leaves. Some of them just look like little brush strokes. Um, that's in keeping with this loose style. We don't want to be too literal with our shapes um, because the minute you start doing that, it becomes a little overworked. So we want to try to keep everything light and that just have a feeling of, of uh, spontaneity. Um, a few more little darks here and there just to indicate some, some shape. And uh, I think that's all we need really there. Um, maybe a few little shadow shapes. And that's it. That's probably the extent of the wicker, um, at least for that part. A little dry brushing um, for some texture there <clears throat> along the edge just to delineate the plane of the wall and the, the, the base where everything is sitting on. All right, back to the little, uh, it's like a little, looks like a little uh, garden pail, like a, a, gal a galvanized pail. Um, that's holding these these little dry flowers in there. Um, I'm using as much color as I can can get. Now they probably aren't the same colors in the picture. I don't really care. It's I think um, we're going to get some of the reflections in there. Um, and I felt that the greenish color actually complements those brown bottles a little bit better. There just seemed to be a lot of blue in in the background, so I decided to get it a little cooler. And that's going to dry, and you'll see I'll probably have more <coughs> shadow shapes in there too going going forward. Now it's everything is still, still wet because I just painted it, so I'm just dropping in now. Actually, this is all uh, dry, but I'm dropping in some more detail um, just to kind of. Now I know that if I look at the picture, that wait a minute, that looks pretty dark over there. Um, or at least it's darker than the photo. You'll see at the end, we do go and use some white to build up some of those, um, or just to bring out some of the light petals that, that are catching the light there. I think it's necessary that we use it because um, there's no other way that we can get those effects without some opaque color. And quite frankly, I'm all about doing, um, you know, getting the effect basically whatever it takes. Um, I've always loved John Singer Sargent's uh, watercolors and he would use uh, candles to get like um, masking effects and uh, it was said that he had used some or, um, opaque paint to, to, to really push the sense of realism and color in his work. So um, I'm not about like being a, um, a purist when it comes to watercolor. I feel whatever's going to make the picture work, um, then use it. Okay, so um, going off that rant, here what I'm doing is I'm adding some more color. And notice now that I'm painting around the flower shapes. Okay, I'm painting around that dried hydrangea flower. Um, and I'm doing that for a reason because. Well, we want to create a shape. We want to have those uh, two shapes connect, that dry flower and the bottle. So, and I think we're achieving that um, to some degree at this point. Um, you don't have to paint every little petal, um, just the big block shapes. Try to make the shapes interesting, make them varied. Um, that's always best to do. And um, yeah, some more color. Um, so that color, probably, if you're wondering, that color is burnt sienna, um, cadmium red, and cadmium yellow. Um, it's like a little, like degrees of one. The darker ones are obviously more burnt sienna with traces of um, burnt umber to get them really, really dark. So here, more color around the base. And... Um, well, the middle, the middle one. Now we're just, I'm just kind of getting big blocks. And if you look at the little inset picture, I don't go as dark as the photograph on these bottles. Um, I try to keep it in keeping with the rest of the painting, um, which is keyed up a little bit. The darks aren't as dark. Um, I didn't want to go that dark, that photographic dark, 
I want to try to keep this painting as atmospheric as possible. If I went too dark, then it would have a tendency to look not overworked necessarily, but it would just be a little bit too um, too intense. Uh, so I'm trying to keep the li liveliness of the picture going. Now I'm adding a little bit more of that golden color on the base of the table um, just to make all the, the, those colors sort of relate. Um, yeah, so we're getting a little bit more uh, texture around. And now, um, yeah, so here I'm, I'm adding some blue. Now this blue is actually cerulean blue light. and um, it's a Grumbacher beginner paint, um, which I don't know why, but this is cerulean blue, and it's it's it comes out of the tube opaque, so I use it whenever I can, um, pretty much full strength with a little bit of water. All right, I'm going back and I'm hitting the um, the little details there. I felt it probably just needed a little something there. Um, all right, uh, just doing some accents in here, little dark darks some more blue you'll see that i'm going to start going up in value on that white now i am using um a product called dr martin's bleed through or blue i should i'm sorry dr martin's bleed proof white <laughs> uh so you can also get pro white which is easier to say uh, so it's the same formula it's exactly the same stuff it's just a different manufacturer it's super super opaque uh, more opaque than any white I've seen in any uh, watercolor uh, sets. Um, China, it kind of blows away China white. Um, it's just really, really, it's just white on steroids. And it's opaque. And it's obviously tintable. You'll see what happens when we start painting the little petals and stuff. Um, yeah, some more details around the window treatment here. Um, keeping everything very suggestive. Some dry brush effects to get some texture along the um, along the way there, keeping it very very simple. All right, I'm not ruling any lines. I'm not getting too detailed in anything. I'm just trying to get the basic lights and darks um, and doing it. Now here is the bleed proof white, um, the Dr. Martin's bleed through white, um, bleed proof white. <laughs> Uh, here we go. So, um, yeah, so this is uh, here. So we're, we're painting this. Now, what's going to happen to the first layer, um, when when it dries, it dries a little bit darker than it, than, than it would. Um, but that's okay. You kind of want that to kind of go dark the first trip, the first uh, uh, go around. And then what we do is we'll just add a little bit more white and we're going to build up those textures. Like right now, it's almost drying as soon as you see it. So the, I'm adding a little bit more white to this. Now, probably asking me or thinking, what color is that? Um, that color is uh, yellow ochre and, and white, okay? Just to keep it more natural looking without getting, uh, without getting too, too intense because those colors are very subtle. Um, all right, so there's more around the edges. There's more. Um, in here, I did a little bit of accenting too, getting some of these, you know, the bottlenecks a little darker, um, adding some darks into the bottle. Just look at what I'm doing is I'm just trying to record some of the shapes that I see. I'm trying not to get too detailed with, again, trying to get the feeling of, of the, of the uh, bottles or the essence of the bottles without getting too caught up in every little striation or reflection in the bottle. All right, there we go. So there's a little bit more. Now that's the cerulean blue, and I am adding a little bit of white to it now just to get the highlights there. And um, as you can see, there's a little blue on the edges and um, around the highlight there, just to indicate that the window, you know, there's a little blue sky in the window. Okay, um, we're, we're almost coming to the end. Uh, we got about three, four more minutes left. Um, more whites, and I probably will go back in. Here we go. Um, just trying to get a few more little petals that are catching the light. Um, I 
have a tendency to go back and forth over those highlights to really make them stand out. So if you have to go over them a couple of times, that's fine. Um, they do, like I said, have a tendency to go a little darker. I'm talking about the Pro White or the Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White. <laughs> Here's some more splattering around. And that's just to indicate some detail. That's all. That's really all that is. There's, there's nothing. And sometimes I'll splatter and then I'll, I'll put a few little dots in. Now I'm going around hitting some accents into some areas. Um, I think we're kind of three, three minutes in. Um, just looking for anything that I need to finish the bottles up a little bit more. Just to give them a little bit more realism. Um, and that's, again, realism in the way of spontaneity, right? Keeping everything nice and loose, um, just to get the feeling of, of the bottles and, and, and these dry um, plant arrangements that are flanking them, right? So, and notice how everything kind of connects the, um, the reddish flowers are picking up the colors from the, from the uh, bottles and, um, and then the dry uh, hydrangea um, flower on the right side is overlapping, picking up some of the yellows from, the, again, from the amber uh, bottles. So we're seeing that everything is kind of working harmoniously. That's what, what makes this picture interesting. And those, um, those drips back there that might have been a concern at the time really don't really matter. I think, um, and I'm talking about like around the big bottle, even this, the bottle in the middle, everything is just bleeding together. It doesn't matter. It kind of, in this type of painting, it definitely adds to the... Um, the whole the feeling of atmosphere okay here i'm going to go back hit hit a few little highlights and and call it a day there um a few more little taps with the white now the white's not pure white i i do add a little bit of um yellow ochre to that just to make it more natural and some more white splatters there and yeah, just little things that catching the light that's all that that's all that is um, a little edge there a little edge texture to make it look a little rustic um, yeah some more lines here and there and here I, I added a little bit of purple again to kind of pick up on and complement I should say the the, um, the amber bottles and there it is I'm pulling off the tape just to show and there's our painting now we can see it in full it's a little darker well thank you guys for watching please like and subscribe see you next time bye now